Well, very good morning to everyone. It is great to see you. It is definitely fall. I have to tell you, this is one of my favorite seasons. Uh, aside from what it does to my allergies, I love fall. I love the colors. I love the crispness. I love that it's hoodie weather. Um, and uh, I just I just love that. So I'm um, looking forward to um, getting out and, uh, and doing stuff outside. So um, we have a wonderful service. So I'm glad that you are inside at this moment. Uh, because we, this is not just a communion Sunday, this is World Communion Sunday. So, and I invite you after the service, if you would uh, like to come up and I, uh, as promised, I brought a few items from my travels around the world. Um, and um, for the, uh, many of them are musical instruments uh, that could be used in worship. We have a slit drum from Papua New Guinea and also a bag called a belum. Uh, this is the uh, PNG version of a purse. Um, we have a, um, a, a flute from Ecuador and a shaker from South Africa. The elephant um, is not from anywhere. Uh, it was actually up for yesterday's uh, memorial or funeral service, but um, there were elephants in South Africa when I was there and I saw them. So I left it up because I thought it was cute. Um, there is a uh, thumb uh, from uh, Africa and this flute, um, which would be very interesting for someone to play, goes around like this and it's from Thailand. You can tell that I do not, do not play that. <laughs> yes, thank you, uh, Lee. Thank you for that. Um, uh, a woven basket from, um, from South Africa, obviously uh, from Australia, a boomerang. Uh, this is a replica of a paddle from Papua New Guinea and a, uh, a carved, uh, alpaca from Jordan. So, um, and in addition to that, as, um, as some of you will remember and others of you will discover, when it comes time for communion, we will be um, uh, exposed, we will have the opportunity to share in the breads from some of our brothers and sisters around the world. So, um, at this point, sit back and enjoy on this World Communion Sunday, and Dick is going to start us off with some music.
And literally, as I turned to sit to this way, I hesitated, I realized I forgot to um, invite you to greet one another. So uh, before we get to the announcements, if you would like to greet folks and also those at home, uh, welcome. We're happy to have you uh, worshiping with us today. Um, tell your friends, we're always here. We're the friendly, crazy church with the big red roof. Maybe just the pastor's crazy, I don't know. But you all come, so uh, let's see. Uh, we do have um, stuff going on. Um, originally, um, the uh, pet blessing was going to be this afternoon, um, given uh, a few different circumstances, including the funeral service yesterday and also the change in the BSA schedule. Um, uh, the pet blessing has been postponed until next week. Um, I do want to say if I have... Um, made it such that anyone now cannot bring their pets. If you're not available next Sunday, please speak to me individually, whether you're at home or, or here, um, and I will make arrangements with you. Um, because um, uh, while it was out of necessity, I also don't want to um, mess anybody up. If you were looking forward to having your pets blessed today, um, I will. I will personally either have you bring them over or I'll go to meet you, whatever it takes. Um, and, and we'll get we'll get all of our um, furry, scaled, feathered, and, and finned friends blessed. Uh, did I miss anybody? I don't think so. Um, so uh, chicken barbecue, um, I believe that I saw people signing up. And of course, there are also tickets available for that. Uh, do spread the word. We are primarily doing advanced ticket sales. Um, if and only if there are extras, will anything be available at the door? So please don't count on that because you may drive up thinking that you're going to have a wonderful chicken lunch and you will end up going to Arby's, which is good too, but we have the better meats here <laughs> at the chicken barbecue. So um, get your tickets and, um, and, and, and mark your calendars for October 30th. Um, I also do, I've made a couple of references to it. Yesterday we did uh, gather here um, for, uh, to celebrate uh, the life of Willie Beauvais. Um, and I would like to say that it was a beautiful service, um, but I can't bring myself to say that, that a funeral service for a 21 month old is beautiful. What I will say is the outpouring of love that was here in this room and in the fellowship hall uh, was beautiful. God was very present in and through everyone who uh, who came, and uh, it's my prayer that God continues to um, show that same love to the Beauvais family um, in in just an incredibly difficult time. But I do want to thank. Um, uh, I had put out texts and said this is an all hands on deck um, event circumstance, and let me tell you, all hands came out. And so uh, that's what I love about our church. When I say that we're a church family, we were a church family yesterday. And, and that also was beautiful. And so uh, many thanks. Um, in the newsletter, I will list you all because I am really afraid I do not have a list up here in front of me and my brain is just slightly scrambled. So I don't want to miss anyone. Uh, but many of you are here today. And thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, uh, yesterday went well because of you. Um, I also want to wish a very happy birthday. Um, and we, I got a whole post-it note today, including today is Nolan Smith's birthday. 
So happy birthday to Nolan. And on Monday, it's Liesl's birthday. So a uh, happy birthday. I always get particularly excited when there's somebody who's in the, in the sanctuary that I can like, you know, call out. Which brings me to our next one, because on Tuesday, it's Pat Custer's birthday. So see, right, right there, we've got, um, uh, on Tuesday is also Blake Kryling's birthday. On Friday, it's Kay's birthday. So um, everybody just do this right now. Just turn around. Kay's always up there. You never see her. But just wish her a happy birthday. See, see, because you can wish um, Pat and Lisa, and I encourage you to do so, a happy birthday after the worship. But Kay's like busying around doing stuff. And on Saturday, Brian Beauvais uh, celebrates his birthday. Um, all right, enough announcements. Um, you can never have enough birthdays, but um, uh, let's let's uh, start out by singing. Since it is uh, World Communion Sunday, let us affirm um, in song, in Christ there is no east or west. have a seat. Truer words are seldom spoken. And as you sit um, throughout the service today, uh, we will not only be uh, observing our regular liturgy, but um, some of the wording may be a little different. It's noted in your bulletins, but for those at home, uh, all throughout the liturgy, we will be using wording uh, from our brothers and sisters, Christians around the world. So our prayer uh, to begin today uh, comes from a compilation of Scotland, New Guinea, and Brazil. We gather today to learn what it means, what it is to be a pilgrim community. We gather longing for the guidance of God's spirit to give us renewal and courage for the days ahead. Let us pray. Lord, oil the hinges of our heart's doors, that they may swing gently and easily to welcome your coming. Come to be our hope, O oh Jesus. Come to set our people free. Come to build your new creation through the road to servanthood. Give us new life to every nation, changing evil into good. Come and open our tomorrow for a realm now so near. Take away all human sorrow. Give us hope against our fear. Amen. And now I would like to invite, yes, you guys got it. You're so good. I don't even need to say anything. All right, let's see. I brought that up. I don't need that. Oh. All right, well, 
uh, I know that I know that you guys don't come here to um, to have have uh, a test, but um, I have a test for you this morning. I, I need a little bit of help. OK, it's easy, though. Easy test. Easy test we're ever going to have. All right. Excited? All right. So here we go. What color is this towel? Green. Okay, good. You passed. Woohoo! What color is this paper? Okay, light green. All right, but green. All right. What color is this scraper? All right, are you guys sure? I mean, I mean, you said this is green, and and uh, okay, lime green. You told me that this is green. Okay, lime green. All right, all right. How, how about what what color is is the border and the butterfly? Green. Yeah, well, there is orange in there. You're right. Green. Okay, you like to say green. Green. Everything green. What color is is the marker? Green, 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 green. Everything's, everything's green. How about how about the thing that hangs off of the pulpit? Green, 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 green. How can all of these things be green? Do you ever wonder about that? And, and, and this is just what I could find in wandering around for about 10 minutes here at the church, and I found all of these green things. I'll bet I could find just as many red things. Look, the red in your shirt is different from the red in your shirt. And, and you guys both have on blue shirts. They do kind of match. Oh, yep, there's red there. And that's a different kind of red altogether, huh? But the red on your pants is different, or the blue on your pants is different than that. There's red. Look, red flowers. Somebody's sitting on a green, uh, on a green dot. And I know that that's a different color than all of these. You got the green dot. So, so are all of these colors green? Well, how can that be if they're if they're different? They're like darker and lighter. They are. They're different. Like we call that shades of green, right? They're different shades. They're they're different colors of green, even though they're all green, right? Yeah, some of them are bigger and smaller. But can we all agree that, that all of these are green and just different types of green, right? But they're all green, right? All right. You know, that's a good lesson for us because sometimes, sometimes people look at different churches and they say, well, this church is this and this church is that and this church is something else. But you know what? As long as the churches worship God and, and believe in Jesus, then they're all Christian churches. And, and sometimes as human beings, we like to say, well, this church is better than this church because of this or something else. That would be like saying this green is better than this green. We might say we like one of the colors of green better. There used to be um, there used to be these colors up here that um, some of us didn't really like the color of. I didn't pull them out, but it wasn't it wasn't a pretty green like this. And so we changed them. So it's okay to have opinions and say, I like this green better than this green or this green better than this green or whatever like that. But, but we don't really say this green is the right color and this green is the wrong color green, do we? No, and you know what? We shouldn't ever do that with, with churches and with people's beliefs. As long as they're Christians, they might worship differently. They, they might use different language than we do. They might, they might do a lot of standing up and sitting down, kind of like a workout routine. And, and we, don't, we do a little bit of that, but, but not that much. They, they might have different types of Bibles than, than you know, different, different wording in the Bibles. Or, or their ministers might look different from me. Sometimes, sometimes the ministers wear a collar. I wear a collar on occasion, but not very often. They're all different, but we're all Christian, even around the world. I, I've already introduced all of these different instruments. Check out. Well, I'm going to, I attempted one and that didn't go so well. I'm going to pull the slit drum. This comes from an island called Papua New Guinea. And the people there are very, very different from us. Their skin color is different. Their language is different. 
the way they worship is different and the way they sing might make all of you go. It's a, it's a type of singing called atonal. And, and I can't even begin to, um, to, to uh, give you an example of it, but um, it's an acquired taste. Let's just say that. Um, but so this is a hollowed out slit drum. This is one of their, this is their type of drum. And they would use this. And they would use it as a percussion instrument, probably much better than what I just did right there. So they're all different, but they're all instruments. Just like these are all different colors of green, but they're all green. And all Christian churches and all Christians are all the same in our hearts because we all believe in Jesus. And that's what we really want to keep in mind. And then sometimes once we know that, it can be fun to find all the differences. I've had a fun time worshiping around the world. You know the one thing that we all have in common? We were all worshiping Jesus. So let's pray. And ask God to help us remember that. God, thank you that, that we're not all the same throughout the world. Because, you know, really, God, like having only one color of green, that would be really boring. Thank you that there are all kinds of differences. And remind us that just because things are different doesn't mean that one is right and one is wrong. They're just different. Different people have different things that they like, and different people worship you in different ways. But we all worship you. We all love you, and you love all of us. Thank you for giving us our differences and help us to always celebrate them like we do today. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Look at there's even different colors of suckers. No, because um, uh, I, I could get somebody who's sitting in the back row to play some instruments to play it, but um, it would not go well if I tried. Good morning. Good morning. Scripture this morning is from John chapter 4, verses 4 through 15. But he had to go through Samaria, so he came to a Samaritan city called Sychar, near the plot of ground that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired out from his journey, was sitting by the well. It was about noon. A Samaritan woman came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. His disciples had gone to the city to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, How is it that you, a Jew, ask a drink of me? a woman of Samaria. Jews do not share things in common with Samaritans. Jesus asked her, if you knew the gift of God and who it is that is saying to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, sir, you have no bucket and the well is deep. Where do you get that living water? Are you greater than our ancestor Jacob who gave us the well? And with his sons and his flocks drank from it, Jesus said to her, everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again. But those who drink of the water that I will give them will never be thirsty. The water that I will give will become in them a spring of water gushing up to eternal life. The woman said to him, sir, give me this water so that I may never be thirsty or have to keep coming here to draw water. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Nailed the words, Diana. Our second scripture is a continuation. We jump ahead just four verses uh, and begin in, uh, again, in John chapter four, verses 19 through 26. And this is... Uh, more of the conversation between Jesus and the Samaritan woman. The woman said to him, sir, I see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worshiped on this mountain, but you say that the place where people must worship is in Jerusalem. 
Jesus said to her, woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will worship the father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You will worship, you worship what you do not know. We worship what we know for salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming and is here now when true worshipers will worship the father in spirit and truth for the father seeks such as these to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said to him, I know that Messiah is coming, one who is called the Christ. When he comes, he will proclaim all things to us. Jesus said to her, I am he, the one who is speaking to you. This is the word of God for the people of God. Let us pray. God, we do give you thanks, and, and we ask that you would oil the door, the hinges of our heart's door, so that they would swing open to you as we worship, as we praise you, and as we seek to learn, to grow in our faith and in our relationship with you. Show us the meaning of these words that Jesus had with the Samaritan woman so that they might make a difference in our lives, even as they did in hers. Amen. All right, I was going to start out by saying, I don't know if you've noticed this, but Ronnie said something to me this morning as we were sitting and getting ready for adult Bible study. He said to me, did you get a new car or is that like just a loner? Well, I don't, I don't know if you have noticed, but there is a new car, a little blue number sitting in my parking place. No, it's not a loner. It is a new car. I wasn't necessarily in the market for a new car. Um, but uh, when you discover coolant in the engine area where the spark plugs go, um, that's not a good thing, and you need a new car. Um, and um, I especially was not looking for an SUV. I've never driven an SUV. Uh, I was told this morning that um, minivans are for soccer moms because I said something about not feeling like a soccer mom, but um, I just never saw myself driving an SUV. I, there's nothing wrong with them. It just wasn't my style. I had always had cars. I had never driven an SUV, but the Ford dealership very kindly will, was willing to take my car in trade, minus, of course, the repairing of the engine. But then that meant I had to take something that was on the lot. And um, so thus there's an SUV sitting in the pastor's parking place um, out front. It is a cool color though. I will tell you, I really like the, uh, the, the color on it. And, you know, after that, as I've been trying to get used to driving an SUV, and I will say, in their defense, you can get a lot of stuff in the back. I've been able to get more in the back than I ever have. Um, I, I'm still trying to adjust to not having a trunk. Uh, I had to get one of those things that pull over so people can't see what's in the back seat because that, like, kind of wigs me out. I, I'm still a New Yorker at heart. Um, I don't like people seeing what's in my car. Um, so I love the spaciousness, but, but I've also been noticing, you know, now that I'm driving something other than what I would have done, I, I never really noticed before just how many varieties of vehicles there are. I mean, I think I knew it intellectually. I just never really paid attention until I was forced to drive something that I never really had dreamed of. So, you know, I mean, there's cars, there's SUVs, there's, there's pickup trucks, um, and, and I don't know quite where you categorize the Jeep. Um, my dad would say that it's the best of the bunch. Um, and of course, minivans. And then within those, then there's all kinds of subcategories, right? I mean, cars, you've got compact, subcompact, um, you've got luxury cars, full-size cars, and now there's hybrid of everything. You've got full-size pickups, smaller pickups that I don't know what they're called. And then you've got the El Camino. And again, I don't know where you put that. Um, all of these different vehicles, you, you can see them on the road, you can check it out in parking lots, it's almost fun, instead of just playing uh, parking or um, uh, bingo with the um, type of license plates, you can play bingo with all the different kind of cars that you could find when you're driving from place to place. But you know, I have never heard anybody as many different vehicles as there are. I've heard people express opinions, like I have already never heard anybody criticize anybody else for the kind of car that they drive. I, I just never have. I mean, there are some cars that I think are ugly. I mean, 
I'm sorry if you like it, but the Kia Soul, I think that's one of the most hideous looking cars that I've ever laid eyes on. But other people love it. My sister had a PT Cruiser. She passed it on to her daughter who promptly referred to it as a PT loser as she drove it around. So everybody has their opinions about what they like to drive and that's fine. But I really honestly have never heard anybody judge or criticize anybody else because of what they're driving. They'll say, well, I wouldn't drive that, but it's not really a critic. You know, you're not dragging anybody down. And the same thing with pets. Next week, we are going to have our pet browsing. Now, I'm a cat person, and I know that there are probably people sitting out here who can't stand cats, and I'm okay with that. We can still be friends. You might be dog people, or you not, might not be pet people at all. My nephew just got a bearded dragon. Let me tell you, there is no way on God's green earth that I would own a bearded dragon. But Andy is happier than he has been in a long time. He is thrilled with Athena, which, yes, that is the bearded dragon's name. Other people think snakes are exactly what they need to have in their life, and their life is not complete without one. Again, just shoot me, because there's no way that I would own a snake. Birds, fish, yeah, I'm all good with that, you know. And as far as I'm concerned, bring it all to the pet blessing. Fish are a little bit more difficult, but just, you know, put them in a little container, like when you're cleaning the tank, bring them on over, I'll bless them, it's, it's fine. We, God loves all creatures. But again, we might have preferences, but I, I don't judge Andy because he wants a bearded dragon. He doesn't judge me because I have cats. We can still be friends. And we don't judge one another just because we have things that are different. We have different hairstyles. We have different um, likes in clothing. We don't judge one another. We don't criticize one another. We may not like it. We may say, ooh, I wouldn't do that. But we don't really judge. In fact, the only area of life that I've ever really encountered where people do judge one another is in where they choose to worship. And I find that kind of interesting. I mean, what is it in us that, that we so need to say that where I'm worshiping is right and where you're worshiping is wrong? Like I told the kids, as long as we're all worshiping Jesus, then it's all right. It's all Christian. It's just different. And so today on our World Communion Sunday, as we celebrate our brothers and sisters around the world who, let me tell you, and anyone else who has been around the world can tell you, they worship differently. I, I, know, I know that uh, Marty and, and um, uh, Lori can share stories from being in Ukraine uh, about how women had to sit in the back or on the sides. Uh, I, I have been places where women had to sit on the floor in, in the back, uh, which let me tell you, the older you get um, becomes a little bit more of a challenge. Obviously, I've been places where there are different languages spoken. I have to tell you, of all the sermons I've ever preached, the one that I am actually most proud of is probably the one that I actually did the worst in presenting, because it's the sermon that I preached to a, um, uh, a church in Honduras, and I wrote it, and I delivered it in Spanish, and while I took three years of Spanish in high school, my Spanish isn't that great, but I so badly wanted to share God's word with the people in their language. And so they forgave me. I, I'm sure the pronunciation was awful. I'm sure they're leaning over to one another going, what did she say? <laughs> but in the end, it worked. And it was beautiful. And, and like I said, that's one of the sermons that I'm most proud of. It was a Christian worship service. I preached a Christian message. I preached it from the Christian Bible. We just used a different language different languages, different liturgies, different ways of worship. There are Christians who worship with all kinds of instrumentation as we see up here, and some who worship with none. There are some people who don't sing at all during worship. They sit quietly. Our Quaker friends just simply sit quietly until someone is moved. There are all kinds of different ways to worship. So I'm not quite sure where we got it in our heads that one way is right and another is wrong. So we bring up this judgment. I, I don't know where it started. I know where it did not start. It did not start with Jesus. As we hear in today's scripture, Jesus was letting this woman know that there is a right way to worship, 
but it doesn't have anything to do with the building or the liturgy or the music or the officiant. It has to do with what's inside. It has to do with how we come to God, not the externals, but do we come to God in spirit and in truth? Now, I know that at first it might sound as though Jesus is saying that one is right and one is wrong. It could easily be read that Jesus is saying the way that the Jews worship is correct and the way that the Samaritans worship is wrong. And in a sense, in all fairness, that is what he was saying. But we need to understand that culturally, the Samaritan people were no longer who they had once been. You see, the Samaritan people were living in an area that uh, when their area was overthrown years and years and years prior, some of the Jews remained. And then it was backfilled with other people, Gentiles, people from different countries. They brought in their own gods, their own practices. And it all became mishmashed together. The Samaritans only had the first five books of the Hebrew scriptures, what we call the Pentateuch. They didn't have all of the prophets. They didn't have the Psalms. They didn't have the wisdom literature. They didn't really have a complete Bible. And so the way they worshiped was what missionaries would refer to as syncretism. It's a little bit of this and a little bit of that all put together. And so when Jesus says, this isn't the true worship of the God of Abraham and of Isaac and of Jacob, he really is just stating fact, not making a judgment. But he says, he doesn't judge her for that in that term, because he says, there's a time coming when it's not going to matter. It's not going to matter if you worship on this mountain or down in Jerusalem. It's not going to matter because we are called to worship God who is spirit in spirit and in truth. And that can sound really confusing. Like, what does that mean? How do we worship in spirit and in truth? If we worship in truth, then don't we have to say that this is true and that is not? Yes, but first, worshiping God in spirit means worshiping God as he really is. You see, God is spirit. God does not have a body. That's why sometimes it's so difficult for people to understand God. Not a ghost necessarily, not like Casper or something that you'd see on Ghost Hunters or any of those other shows that uh, have become popular in uh, pop culture, but God is spirit. And so when we seek God, it's important to not equate God with any of the trappings that we have. So God is not this building. God exists in the building. God is not that cross, nor is Jesus the cross. The cross reminds us of God's love and of Jesus's sacrifice. And so it's important to not create for ourselves things that we think are God and recognize that God is spirit. And the beautiful thing about that is it means we don't have to be in a building at all. I have done baptisms outside. And let me tell you, as Cheryl and Tom and I were talking earlier this, this morning, because I baptized their grandson out in their backyard, and it was beautiful. We were in God's real sanctuary. I baptized others in, in running waters. I baptized some who were here in the Jordan River. We don't have to be in a place to worship God because God is spirit and God meets us everywhere. But that's not all it means to worship God in spirit. You see, just as God is spirit, so are we. I realize that it's hard to think of ourselves in that way, because when we look in the morning mirror, we see a physical being. We see hair and flesh and sometimes uh, droopy eyes from a long previous day. But we think of ourselves as physical beings, but that's only part of who we are. If we're only physical beings, then we don't need to have services like we had yesterday for Willie, because there is no beyond in this world. The only way we can celebrate the promise of heaven is because we know that we are more than just a physical being. So that when our physical body no longer functions, our spirit, you might call it our soul, our spirit moves on to the next place to be with God, to heaven, to the world beyond this one. And so we are spirit. And if you look in the Genesis, you'll see that it says that God created human beings in God's image. I've already told you that God is spirit. And so while I actually believe that that comment means many things, 
one of the things that I believe it means is that we are spirit as well as human, as well as physical. That's what God created us as. So to worship God in spirit and in truth means allowing our spirit within us to seek God. It's seeking God with our innermost parts. Seek the God who is spirit to connect with us. And we have an even better way to do this than our friends in the Old Testament. Even better than the Samaritan woman knew. Because you see, as a result of Jesus' sacrifice and, and overcoming of death, and the grave, Jesus sent as he promised the Holy Spirit. We now have God's spirit living in our hearts to connect our spirit with God's. We have this wonderful way of connecting. And so when we worship through the Holy Spirit and in the Holy Spirit, then we are worshiping in spirit and in truth. Now there's that word again, truth. What does it mean truth? Is one way true and the other is not? Well, Jesus is equating spirit. Worship in the spirit as the true worship. And that's what he's saying. And of course, as Christians, we know that Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So worshiping in truth means worshiping in Jesus, worshiping through the Holy Spirit that he gave us, allowing our spirits to reach out to and connect with God on a level that doesn't require any of this. All of this facilitates true worship. And that's why I think that there are so many different kind of churches, not to judge, not because one is right and one is wrong, but because each of us needs something different. We need something a little different to connect our spirits with God's, to help facilitate that, to help guide us along that journey. My dad used to um, equate religion with cars. And he always said, you know, it doesn't matter if you're driving a Cadillac or a uh, Pinto. Um, you can all explain to some of the younger kids what a Pinto is. Doesn't matter if you're driving a Cadillac or a Pinto, as long as it runs, as long as it gets you to where you're going to go, and as long as it works for you, then it's right. It's fine. We all have different opinions when it comes to cars. We've already established that. Same thing with pets and clothing and hairstyles and everything else in life, including sports teams. Congratulations, by the way, to the Guardians. But when it comes to worshiping God, those opinions are meant to facilitate our connection with God, not say that one is right and one is wrong. As long as we're worshiping genuinely in spirit and in truth, seeking through the Holy Spirit to connect our spirit with God's spirit, then we're right and we're fine. It's all good. And that's what Jesus was sharing with the Samaritan woman. So on this World Communion Sunday, as we celebrate the various ways around the world that Christians worship, let's celebrate those differences. Let them become this wonderful diversity like pieces in a mosaic that paint this beautiful picture of who God is. Because here's the thing, none of us have the full story. None of us have the corner on everything. And the more we learn about the way other people worship, the more we learn how to connect with God. It's, I'll leave you with a, a story that I heard one time about uh, three blind men, uh, because it's, it's a lot like this. There are three blind men and they had never seen an elephant before. See, I told you I would connect the elephant. And so they had an opportunity to see through their hands what the elephant looked like. So one of them is standing next to its side and he puts his hand out and he feels the side of the elephant and he goes, oh, the elephant looks, looks like a wall because it's solid and it's, it's firm and, and it's big. The other one was standing by the elephant's ear and he was reaching out and, and touching the ear. And he goes, no, 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 no. Elephant looks, looks like a tree with great big leaves. I can feel one right now. It's just like a leaf. Still, the other was standing around front and was feeling the elephant's trunk. And he says, no, 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 you both are wrong. An elephant looks like a snake. I, I, can, I can feel it right here. Well, who was right? They were all right because they were all experiencing something different. 
all of our liturgies are fine as long as we're worshiping Jesus. And so let us experience the differences around our world. Go ahead and move around the elephant. What you're going to find is this beautiful picture of God's love for you and what Christ has done. So let us worship in spirit and in truth. Amen. Oh, yep, I'm sorry. Uh, let us be, yeah, let us take all as partners in Christ's service as we celebrate our common call and common faith. <laughs> can have a seat oh my goodness sometimes my brain like skips on to the next thing um and i was i was concerned about getting this uh because i knew that uh, we are going to continue with the liturgies from around the world so from our friends in south africa let us present with joy our offerings of commitment and support for the work of christ's church let us prepare christ's table with the offerings of our life and labor I invite the ushers to come forward for this morning's offering.
from Zimbabwe. God of all good, our gifts we give to you. We pray that they may multiply and be blessed as the fish and the loaves were. May they be tokens of our love to you. We all had wishes to show our love, though some could not. But down in our hearts, we are all thanking. Little maybe our offering is, but meaningful in love may it be. Amen. Thank you. What a joy it is in any language, in any culture, in any building, uh, among any people to gather at Christ's table. Because truly Jesus prepared this table for all people, all of us everywhere. We're supposed to be doing the prayer right now, aren't we? <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, Kay. I told you my brain just, okay. Sorry. Okay, here we go. Uh, pastoral prayer um, from our friends in Uganda and our own. Let us pray. We thank you, God, for your creation. You created earth and heaven. You created man and woman. You created sun and moon. You are the only God to be worshipped. Thank you, God, for giving us life. We thank you for the good sunshine. Thank you for the good rain that causes the crops to grow. God, be praised for the plenty of good harvest. We thank you for our food, for our bananas, sorghum, beans, maize, and others, O oh Lord. God, we thank you for our cows, goats, sheep that give us milk and meat. Thank you, God, for giving us children. You are the source of life. We thank you. We, your children, are happy, enjoying the fruits of your creation. Therefore, we thank you. Divine intelligence, give us peace in our country. We want peace in our homes. Give peace to the world of which you saved from the power of Satan. Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you and praise you for our salvation. God, on this World Communion Sunday, we recognize that we are so many people throughout the world different languages, different faces, different cultures, but one faith in you. And so just as we have worshiped and praised you in the traditions of other cultures, now we pray as St. Paul's, your church, individual, but not alone. Because we are connected with all of your other churches, our brothers and sisters around this great planet. God, we pray this morning in thanksgiving for all that you have done, and in petition for all that we need you to do. You have blessed each of us in so many ways. Open our eyes anew that we might always see not only our blessings, but also your love with which they are given. God, we are also mindful of the needs of others, both strangers and friends, because we know all are truly brothers and sisters in your family. This morning, we remember those who are on our minds, and hearts, including the Beauvais family and all of our farmers who are laboring even now out in the fields. We pray God your healing hand upon the hearts of those who mourn and, and on the bodies of those who struggle. And we pray your protection and your guidance for all who seek you and seek to do your work. We lift up to you all who are on our hearts in the sacredness of your presence. And we close by uniting our hearts in the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, give us a day. Give us. Amen.
Thank you, and forgive me, um, but I, I do have to say it was incredibly beautiful to listen to you all pray prayer. I might drop out more often. Now let us gather at Christ's table, knowing that all are welcome, knowing as the United Church of Christ says, no matter who you are, where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. So let us prepare our hearts. God be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to God most high. An invitation from our friends in Spain and Guatemala. Partake of the bread and the wine, the ageless symbols of Christ's life given for others. Eat and drink because of your need and not because of some special goodness that you may possess or privilege you may feel. Reach out to those near you and receive their friendship. Reach up to receive the friendship of God and be this day truly reconciled. Let us pray. You emptied yourself completely, keeping nothing for yourself. Now naked, utterly stripped, you give yourself to us as bread which sustains us and as wine that consoles us. You are light and truth. You are the way and the hope. You are love. Grow in us, Lord. No matter the language that you read it in, we know the truth that we read in the scriptures. We know that on the final night of his life in this world, Jesus wanted nothing more than to gather the, with those who were closest to him, his disciples. And so they gathered to celebrate the Passover meal in the upper room. And as the meal had concluded, he took a loaf of bread from the meal. It may have even been a pita similar to this. He lifted it before God and he gave thanks. And then as this, his disciples looked on, he broke it. And then he gave it to them. And he said, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup. In those days, it was a common cup at the meal. And again, he lifted it before God and gave thanks for it. And again, he gave it to his disciples, telling them, this is the, new, the cup of the new covenant. My blood poured out for you and for all who believe. As often as you share in this bread and in this cup, as often as you gather at this table together, you are proclaiming my death until the day that I return. And so as God's people, as Jesus's followers and disciples of modern day, let us unite our hearts and ask God's blessing upon these elements. God, we thank you for the life, death, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. We pray in the words of our friends from Spain, eternal God who has called us from the busy world to worship thee in quietness. We approach the table of thy son, unworthy even to be near it for who can say he has no need to ask the ancient question, Lord, is it I? Help us to eat the bread in remembrance of the body that was broken for us and by drinking the cup to show forth the Lord's death till he comes again in glory. Henceforth, let that mind be in us, which was in Christ Jesus, and grant also that we may be in him. Consecrate now these emblems, that they may be truly to us the bread of heaven to succor us and the wine of joy to sustain us. And grant us the comforting presence of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. Amen. I will invite the elders and deacons to come forward.
I neglected to say there, are, there is on the plate that has been passed tortillas from uh, our Latin friends, pita, and also uh, rice, uh, uh, rice cakes from our uh, friends in Asia. Let us, as we prepare to partake in the meal that Christ has made possible for us, let us confess our faith. Merciful God, as sisters and brothers in faith, we say again boldly what we believe. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. In faith of what we have confessed, and as a body of Christ, knowing that we are united with our brothers and sisters around the world, this is the body of Christ broken for you, but a share together in faith. This is the cup of the new covenant. 
Christ's blood shed in love for all of us, everywhere, all who believe. With our brothers and sisters around the world, let us remember him, his love and his sacrifice as we share together. And let us pray together in the words from our friends in Nicaragua and Algeria. Loving God, make us good neighbors to all the suffering and wounded of our world. Even more, help us to see them as neighbors to us, bearers of our hope and salvation, calling us to conversion. As the needle naturally turns to the north, when it is touched by the magnet, so it is fitting, O oh Lord, that your servant should turn to love and praise and serve you, seeing that out of love you were willing to endure such grievous pains and sufferings. Amen. standing and let us close out our worship singing the hymn blessed be the tie that binds blessing in the words of our friends from Japan. Go into the world with a daring and tender love. The world is waiting. Go in peace. And all that you do, do it for love and by the spirit of Jesus, who is the Lord. Amen. <laughs>